This is I Hear Things for Friday, April 15th, podcasting's most important investment. I'm Tom Webster. Well, this podcast is admittedly going to be a little irrational today because I'm feeling a little irrational today. Maybe it's the thought of $40 billion of wealth potentially being used to buy Twitter by an unempathetic man-child who's hoarding crypto to leave the poor behind on a dying planet. Or maybe it's just inflation. I don't know. But lately, I've been thinking very keenly about the opportunity cost of things. Not what we spend money on, but what we aren't spending that money on. And here's something I'm not spending money on. NFTs. But fret not, you hodlers of apes and cryptodes. iHeartMedia will buy them from you. Maybe. But they are certainly more than dipping their toe into the space, buying a handful of otherwise unrelated NFTs that they're packaging up into a unit they're calling the Non-Fun Squad, which for the moment is functionally accurate. It's inevitable that NFT technology will become a part of our future. And I love the fact that the original artist has a means to continue to profit from the appreciation and resale of their work with smart contracts. That's really cool. I don't think this technology is going to end up being as decentralized as some of the NFT zealots think, just as crypto is not going to flourish here in America, at least, without some kind of consumer protection and oversight. But, quote, NFT, unquote, as in the current crop of apes, lions, penguins, etc., I'm, I'm less bullish on those. And my suspicion is that a wallet full of these avatars is going to look a lot like my tie drawer. It's a collection of expensive things that I no longer look at. I have multiple issues with these things, ranging from their crypto requirement, which I think needs to get held up to the light more. Often when I mention this to people, I'm told that that's the only way you can prove that you bought it. Well, I'm not sure that's the only reason crypto is being brought into this. And then there's the whole language of projects and communities that this very transactional fad seems to have engendered. I'm not sure there is a thread that binds these communities together beyond the project, which is an Ouroboros of circular reasoning that ultimately only benefits the creators of the project. People are investing in art by, you can't even name the artist, right? The play money aspect of crypto, especially for those who have held it for some time, has created a barrier to entry for newcomers. Crypto is very expensive if you're getting into it now which leaves early adopters holding a bunch of derivative lions and giraffes without really a new market to resell them to. And what does it really mean to be a part of the bored ape community anyway? It's fashion. And there is a part of that that resonates for sure. But fashion generally depreciates. It doesn't appreciate. I have a drawer full of expensive ties I've already named that I can certainly hold up to attest to that. I've heard uh, Gary Vaynerchuk compare NFTs to collectibles like Steiff Bears and Beanie Babies and how much money those have made. And I guess Gary's making money on NFTs. And Ty made a lot of money on Beanie Babies for sure. But there are whole documentaries about the people who lost their shirts on them, who got swept up in that exact kind of language like drops and community. The first person not named Gary V who makes a million on V friends will be a rare bird indeed. Maybe even a dope dodo. But still, I've immersed myself into the language of crypto and NFTs in order to understand them. And I think at this point, my relationship with NFTs in their current manifestation is the same as my relationship to eating uni, the row of a sea urchin. I understand that it's a delicacy for some, but it turns my stomach. Now back to iHeart, I'll give them this. They have a reputation for swinging for the fences when it comes to things that will bring attention to the company, from the iHeart Radio Music Festival to the company's regular presence at Con. NFTs are hot, and iHeart has certainly done a good job over the years appropriating what is new and what is cool to punch above their weight with advertisers. But still, I wondered if there might be more than meets the eye with this announcement. The company isn't turning into a high-volume NFT trader or a crypto speculator. This isn't an investment-level move. Nor do they seem to be going into the business of creating podcasts about crypto or NFTs. My friends Michael Stelzner and Brian Fanzo have you covered there, by the way, and I will link to their podcast in my show notes. No, the stated goal of the non-fun squad is to create podcasts and related assets 
about the characters represented by the NFTs iHeart has purchased. I want to say that again. The goal of the non-fun squad is to create podcasts and related assets about the characters represented by the NFTs iHeart has purchased. Now, the priciest NFT iHeart bought was uh, CryptoPunk number 2821. And one of the great things about the blockchain is that anyone can read it. It's just a record of transactions, and it's open to anyone who chooses to read it. So according to that record, CryptoPunk number 2821 sold to iHeart for 66.66 ETH, Ethereum. That's the number of the beast plus 0.06. Now, at the time, that was roughly $213,000. And since that sale just a few days ago, uh, ETH has tumbled a bit, which makes CryptoPunk number 2821 now worth a skosh over $200,000. But, you know, easy come, easy go. And since this avatar is now the main avatar of the entire non-fun squad collection, it's safe to assume that this is the poster child of this effort. It was certainly the most expensive NFT of the batch. Now, I can envision all kinds of podcasts built around NFT-derived characters, like the super mutant apes, right? I mean, you could imagine seeing a picture of a super mutant ape and thinking of a show like, What Are You Eating? Or, What Are You Eating and Why Did You Change Your Shirt? Or, What Happened to Your Eyeballs? The possibilities are finite. All right, I'm being snarky. And I'm going to stop being snarky right now because this is actually serious business. Why would iHeart do this? And what are the implications? Well, here's what the company itself says. And I quote, There is no real precedent for this, said Khalil Tawil, the EVP and head of strategy for iHeart Media. Web3 innovations offer an entirely new IP paradigm, allowing us to combine the characters from different universes and projects without running into IP rights issues. These podcasts will be hosted by voices that portray the various NFT characters, and we are only acquiring NFTs that allow us to freely bring to life iHeart-owned NFTs in ways that work for podcasts. And this is all you need to know about this venture. Now think about the hits that iHeart has had in podcasting, and the outlier here is Stuff You Should Know, which was acquired and not grown by iHeart. After that, the shows they are best known for are the Ron Burgundy podcast, which is hosted by Will Ferrell, and The Breakfast Club, hosted by Charlemagne the God. Now, do you know what the most expensive components of those shows are? The parts that have the most risk for the future? That's right, Will Ferrell and Charlemagne the God. iHeart can't own Will Ferrell. They can only rent him at increasingly worse terms. But you know who they can own? CryptoPunk number 2821. In every sense of the word. Now, I don't know what iHeart will eventually call them or what their personality will be or who they'll be voiced by, but ultimately, if this works, CryptoPunk number 2821 will be functionally identical to Doctor Who and narratable by any number of replaceable voice actors. There have been 13 Doctor Whos. Tom Baker, by the way, is the GOAT. Now, what fascinates me about all of this are the intellectual property ramifications. The nature of the NFT transactions iHeart has initiated is that these characters and all of the IP associated with them belong lock, stock, and barrel to iHeart, which means if they want to rename CryptoPunk number 2821 to Ralph or Wilma or Beta or Bob Pittman, they can do so. And though the creators of the various NFTs iHeart purchased surely never foresaw these collisions, CryptoPunk number 2821 is about to become friends with a bunch of apes and toads and women of the world with whom they have never collided in ways in which the originators of these various drops couldn't have imagined. And there's nothing they can do about it. iHeart owns the IP for these NFTs. So if iHeart wants to make a Quirky's number 307 snuff film, they can. They have purchased these characters free and clear. I I hope they don't do that. Now, it may be that someday Quirky's number 307 is worth what Iron Man or Super Mario is worth. Probably not, but even a fraction of that worth would be an unqualified success for a character whose IP was so easily and potentially inexpensively purchased by iHeart. If that's true, then iHeart is crazy like a fox. But it's not going to be easy. For one thing, the actual universe of people that own or even care about these characters is very, very small. 
there are only 10,000 board apes. And as those are now priced out of reach for most collectors, we have the stock split that is mutant apes, which is what iHeart purchased. And there are only 20,000 of those. Now, my friend Michael Stelzner reminds me correctly that there are many more people who want to own an ape than actually have one. And there are nearly 170,000 people in the Board Ape Discord community. But that's not a podcast audience. Even converting a nearly hallucinogenic 25% of those Discord users doesn't make a podcast that iHeart can sell. And by the way, there's also the insurmountable difficulty of starting with the toy or character and then creating a successful media property around it. There is only one good movie made this way, and that is Paddington 2. And I will brook no insolence pertaining to that matter. Now, those difficulties aside, I am also keenly interested in what the potential backlash might be from the communities that have invested in these NFT projects like World of Women that iHeart is planning to co-opt for its own uses. Now, yes, this may boost the value of the existing World of Women NFTs, but at what cost? What happens to these transactional communities when a big brand moves in and puts its feet up on the coffee table? How does the Cryptodes community feel about the Bored Ape community? Are they farmers and cowmen? We're going to find out. Ultimately, though, there are signs that this entire venture has mistimed the excitement curve around NFTs, which is already waning pretty significantly. The owner of the NFT for Twitter founder Jack Dorsey's first tweet, which was purchased for $2.9 million, just put it up for sale for a jaw-dropping $48 million. The top bid before the auction closed? 280 bucks. Google Trends also shows that the interest in the search term NFT is asymptotically approaching zero. And the entire market for NFTs, which once peaked at $23 billion, is now less than half that. It's about 10. Now, NFTs will come back in a manner of speaking, but as something much more transactional and not as the driver of that transaction. Let me be clear about that. But I'll tell you why this bothers me. And it's really down to what I started this podcast with opportunity cost. And I'll say this again, it's a thing that I've been preparing you for these last few months on this very show. Podcasting did not grow last year. And while there remains potential for video first channels like YouTube and TikTok to be a part of a growth strategy for the future, the industry also has to prepare itself for at least one of those possible futures, the one in which audio only podcasting has peaked. Now, what I would love podcasting companies to spend their money on is growing the space, building excitement, understanding, and interest with the general population. This is the investment big podcasting needs to make. And this is all pretty important right now. YouTube is awakening to their potentially formidable power in this space, but Facebook seems to be taking a nap. The IAB podcast upfronts, which start just days after the in-person new fronts, is happening virtually yet again, which means that my excitement for the upcoming slate of new podcasts is going to be tempered by the fact that Walnut has to go for a walk, and I need to make dinner, and there's no one in the hallways of my building to talk about podcasting with. There's a pause in the story of podcasting. But podcasting has a strong and positive story. There is a podcast for everyone, and each of us needs to tell that story loud and true. We must help ourselves. Think about that relative you have that loves building ships and bottles and find them the ultimate ship in a bottle podcast. Find that snarky crochet podcast for your snarky crocheting uncle. That Duke podcast for that nut cousin of yours who won't shut up about Duke. The perfect divorce podcast for that college friend you were a groomsman for, and you could have told him, but no, he wouldn't listen. You can find these podcasts because you want to find them. Ultimately, there is no discovery problem. There is a don't care enough about podcasting to search problem. Each of us has to be a one-person solution to that problem. No one is coming to save us. All right, that is as ranty as I'm going to get for a while. Thanks for listening. 
The NFT for this podcast is available on OpenSea for just 10 ETH if you'd like to invest. But otherwise, if any of this resonated with you, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the newsletter at tomwebster.media, subscribing to this podcast. These cost zero Ethereum, I promise. Uh, Share this with others if you would, and you can also support the podcast and its companion newsletter at buymeacoffee.com slash Tom Webster. Uh, and that will, of course, go for Treats for Walnut. This has been I Hear Things for Friday, April 15th, 2021. I'm Tom Webster. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll see you next time.